After finishing the ANS chapter in the last 20 videos, that were full of illustrations and in less than 2 hours. Now it's time to start discussing the cardiovascular system. This video will be a brief introduction to CVS including some basics and important definitions you should know before going through the upcoming lectures. The PDF of this lecture will be down in the description, so without any further delay, let's start. The cardiovascular system consists of the heart, or also known as the myocardium, and the blood vessels. The heart is the muscular pump of the body, it beats non-stop for the entire lifetime to supply blood which is loaded by oxygen and nutrients to all tissues of the body. And the blood vessels are classified to, the type that carries oxygenated blood from the heart to tissues, and they are called arteries. And the smaller arteries are called arterioles and the type that carries deoxygenated blood from the tissues to the heart, the veins, and the smaller veins are called venules. And the last type that connects arterioles and venules, the capillaries. Let's use a simplified illustration. The heart is composed of four chambers, two atria and two ventricles. Venous blood enters the right atrium through two veins, the superior and the inferior vena cava. The blood passes from the right atrium to the right ventricle through the tricuspid valve, then contracts to push the blood through the pulmonary artery to the lungs, where exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide occurs. Then oxygenated blood returns to the heart from the lungs through four pulmonary veins that enter the left atrium. And here we should notice these exceptions, the pulmonary artery is the only artery that carries deoxygenated blood and the pulmonary veins are the only veins that carry oxygenated blood. Then blood passes from the left atrium to the left ventricle through mitral valve, then contracts to push the blood through aorta, which then distribute blood to all body tissues. We should also know that the wall of the left ventricle is thicker than the right ventricle, and the wall of atria is thinner than ventricles. The heart is supplied with blood through the coronary arteries that surround it. The heart can beat spontaneously at a rate of 40 beats per minute. Beating of the heart is myogenic in nature, not neurogenic. That means that it does not need an intact nerve supply to beat. And the evidence is that the heart of the fetus during pregnancy beats before the heart is innervated. And also isolated frog's heart can beat spontaneously. Although the rhythmic beating of the heart is myogenic, it's still under the influence of autonomic nervous system by its two branches. The heart receives impulses from sympathetic and vagus parasympathetic nerves. Sympathetic nerve, as we know from the ANS chapter, releases norepinephrine, increasing the heart rate. And vagus nerve, releases acetylcholine, decreasing the heart rate. In general, neural control of the heart speeds the pulse up to 70 beats per minute. Sympathetic and vagus nerves are under the control of higher centers in the brain. So let's talk about the conducting system of the heart. The heart beats rhythmically, and this rhythm depends mostly on sinoatrial node, or known as SAN. SAN is called the pacemaker of the heart, as it is the most rapidly beating part of the heart. So, SAN controls the heart rhythm and initiates the contraction of the heart. In general, the part discharging at the highest rate is the pacemaker of the heart. First, impulse starts from sinoatrial node then travels through atria, producing contraction of the atria. Then it reaches atrioventricular node. Then to atrioventricular bundle, then travels through the ventricles, producing contraction of the ventricles. Finally we'll talk about some important definitions, that will be extensively used in the next lectures. The first one is the heart rate. It is the number of beats in one minute, normally it is 70 beats per minute. If a drug increases the heart rate, it is said to have positive coronotropic effect, or known as tachycardia. And if a drug decreases the heart rate, it is said to have negative coronotropic effect, or known as bradycardia. The second is the stroke volume. It is the volume of blood in milliliters, ejected by the heart in each beat, in normal adult about 70 milliliters per beat. It indicates the force of contraction of the heart. Increased stroke volume means increased force of contraction, which is known as positive inotropic effect. The third definition is the cardiac output. It is the volume of blood, in liters, 
pumped by the heart in one minute. It depends on two variables, the heart rate and the stroke volume. By multiplying both variables we can get the cardiac output, which equals to about 5 liters. Cardiac output is connected to blood pressure, and that's what we'll figure out in the upcoming lectures. That's all for this lecture. In the upcoming lecture we'll start discussing the hypertension. If that was useful for you, leave like or comment, subscribe and keep following us.